Speeding through the streets of Gotham, here's your look at the Batman Mission's Cannon Attack Batmobile. The Batmobile features air power. In other words, you can squeeze and strike your opponents with missile launching and air-powered attack weapons. This is a very cool Batmobile, but just how big is it? We'll take the tape measure, we'll measure it from this end to this end over here, and stopping it right there, there we go. According to the tape measure, from here to here, the end to the front, you're looking at 13.3 inches in length. Now switching that over to centimeters, you're looking at 33.9, about 34 centimeters long. For a couple size comparisons, there it is next to the Batman. Obviously Batman is going to be inside the Batmobile, but I'll just show you how big the Batmobile is compared to the Cape Crusader in the meantime. And another rather neat comparison that we can make as well, one of his other vehicles we've already looked at on this channel. Here he is. Here it is. We'll hang him over a little bit. Here it is next to the Bat Cycle. Bat Cycle on obviously is a lot smaller. It's about two-thirds the length. In fact, let me just go ahead and take these missiles off completely. Anybody wanting to see an extensive review of the uh, Bat Cycle, I've already done it on this channel. Feel free to have a look at that. But it's about two-thirds, roughly about two-thirds the length of the Batmobile. Don't worry, we'll revisit having Batman in the review here. But in the meantime, we want to just have a look at this really outstanding looking Batmobile. Now, of course, the gimmick behind this is, quote, air power. When what is air power, you may ask? Well, it is air powered, a little, uh, little squeeze. It's almost like a little pillow uh, cushion that you're going to be squeezing up and down. And that will control the different weapons that are on the front. For example, it does come with this little buzz saw. I say little, I mean, it's far from being a little buzz saw. It spins around and that's going to be propelled by the air pressure that's going to come through these tubes. Let me just show you right here. Here's one of the tubes that runs from the buzz saw blade. It runs all the way to the back and it connects to the back of the Batmobile. And again, you're just going to use the air cushion. Uh, same idea also with the missile launching up the top there. Would this be called an air bladder? I'm trying to remember the name of this correctly. It's a little cushion that it's obviously going to control everything that's going to happen on the Batmobile. The other thing it does come with, going back to what I had talked about before, about very large things, I don't know how they could really work on the vehicle. And you have this giant, as an example of that, this giant firing cannon. It does come with some other missiles as well, which just so happen to be the exact same missiles that came also included with the Bat Cycle. So if you miss one, you lose one, you just replace it with one of the ones that you've already got from your figures. I think also the figures that are the air power there i go using the quotations air power again you can use those missiles as well and a lot of these components these launching weapons or air powered weapons will also be able to be used with the figures so let's say we want to start from the beginning and we work our way up what we want to do is we want to take off not necessarily take the whole thing off we want to take off these little valves just like that and we pop that back into place, just locks very easily in place. You could easily just take that right out. And as you see, where's the inside of it right there? Again, just fit that in place. And we spin it around. We can take this off. There's one of them. There's the firing, launching, firing cannon. And then the other thing we can take off is the buzz saw. Let's start kind of from the basics and we'll work our way up. We'll add all the other things to it in a second. In the meantime though, let me just spin it around here. There we go, just take that off. Let's look at the bare bones. And you know what, for the bare bones, why don't we just take that off as well. This is what the bare bones Batmobile looks like with all that other stuff removed. Looking at it, it kind of reminds me of the new Batman Adventures slash 
<clears throat> the Batman v Superman Batmobile. Sort of a combination of the two vehicles put together. There's a little bit also, as you can see here from the side kind of grilling here, and it's sort of the cockpit also reminds me a little bit of the uh, Batman Forever Batmobile. Of course, minus the big giant fin on the top. It's relatively light. There's not a lot of plastic that was really utilized here. It's basically just a shell, which translates to be an extremely light Batmobile. It rolls easy. There's no real problems necessarily with it rolling. You do have a little bit of kind of rubbing on the, on the surface here. You've got a few of these little extra pieces that stick further down, but it's only because it's on a, uh, a backdrop here in which I've got the review going on that uh, you probably will hear a little bit of kind of scratching as it goes on the surface. Uh, we'll look at the cockpit. We'll go ahead and open that up. They didn't actually use stickers, which I'm impressed by. Instead, they used almost like a blue tinted plastic, which just so happens to be the same blue plastic that's featured down below here, and almost this sort of circuitry sculpting that they've put in there. The cockpit opens, and inside seats only one figure. So we'll go ahead, for example, and we'll go back to the Batman that we had a look at. Let's just grab him off to the side, and we'll just tuck him inside the Batmobile. Seat belts, Batman doesn't need seat belts, although he really should have seat belts to be safe. But as you can see, it does fit one figure quite snugly and comfortably. We just close off the the uh, the dome here. Now, uh, it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it immediately snaps in. If, if I show you here, it does involve an extra pushing, which doesn't always lock it into place, especially if it shifts around, which at times it does. Kind of have to line it up to the center and then give it a good snap push down. And there's the Batmobile. It does look really neat. I'm happy that it doesn't have all excessive amounts of stickers on it. Uh, in fact, the only thing that's really painted other than just the black and the blue is the little yellow that's on the front for the headlights. And we've got these little step pads, I guess little noted areas in which Batman knows where to step. But I mean, if he's built the Batmobile, he likely knows where he can step on it. Uh, there's the side of it, and there's what the back looks like. The back kind of looks a lot like, the once again, the Ben Affleck Batman Batmobile, and also looks a lot like the Tumbler. Big, giant wheels. Uh, I wish it kind of had something up here, though, because when you look at the Batmobile, let me just put it down once again, it has a relatively low profile, really flat on the top. Also, what, probably what you'll see as well is all these holes. There's two in the front, four in the front, two in the closer front, and then two further up from there, four, plus one in the middle. There's one at the top here, and there's one on either side. That will then play into all these extra weapons, all these extra things that we have going on here. Uh, again, we've got the cannon here, and we'll take Batman back out of the Batmobile. There we go. Just to show you, I don't have any air attack figures I can show you just off the bat, but they would basically have, let me just show you here, they would have this, sort of the same, sort of the same air cushion there on the back, the same, I think it's an air bladder on the back there. And you can hear it, there's one, and there's the other side. You can feel where the air is coming out of it. But the air attack figures, the air power figures, would basically have these things on the back, and then you could attach whatever weapons you want to it. And there's a, there is a handle, in theory, and in theory, it does fit into Batman's hand. Though not easy, and as you could probably guess it, how could Batman even possibly be able to fire that? It's way too big. The same thing also applies for, let me just grab it off here, the buzzsaw blade, which also spins. I mentioned that a couple of times, but I'll mention it again. And it also has a little handle section that you can fit into Batman's hands, like that. Again, it is extremely heavy, so getting a figure to properly hold it up would be next to impossible. So I probably won't display them with the weapons. What I will do, though, is that we can then take the Batmobile. We can take this, and we'll just... If you look at it here, it's kind of like... There you go. It's a circle, and it's got these little side tabs to it, so it has to only connect one way. Put it up, so it's got to be facing upright. 
and it tabs just into the side. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Now really, you don't have to necessarily use both of them. You could really just use one of them if you want. Again, just line that up, make sure everything's in place. Then we'll go ahead and spin the Batmobile back around. We'll take this and slide this in. You may find yourself actually even having an easier time of attaching all of that after the fact. But we'll just tab that into place. And then it's entirely up to you then where you want to put these weapons. Being that they are universal pegs, they really could go anywhere. Again, two in the front, two further up from there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. So let's say, for example, I'm going to put the buzzsaw at the front here. Actually, you know what? Some areas are a little bit more difficult. You couldn't, you couldn't possibly put it there because the buzzsaw wouldn't be able to spin. You have to allot for enough clearance. So I'm going to put the buzzsaw blade right on the end. I think that's actually where the packaging also indicates that it should go. Well, based solely on that. And then we go ahead and take this part, which is slightly smaller actually, and I'm going to put it right above the cockpit, just like that. Now, to operate this, unfortunately, one problem that you're going to face is that the tubing is going to kind of drape down. There's no real workaround to that. It's just the nature of the way the Batmobile is. You can kind of fix it by sort of just draping all the stuff along the back here. And there's these little prongs that you can kind of make use of as more or less just catching areas, catching uh, devices than anything else. The wheels, again, will be rubbing up against the tube, so you want to kind of make sure everything is sort of out of the way. But as a result of it, you're going to have all this extra bunch up happening. So if we press down on this, now not knowing which way I've connected this, there's this little dial on the underside. You turn it this way, and it's going to use the it's going to use it the the air pressure is going to push out on this side of the tube. Likely, if likewise, if you have it facing this way, then it's going to be it's going to be shooting out this tube right here. There is a little notch right here. I'm surprised it's actually not centered when you initially get it, but that knob will sort of dictate which way it's going. Yeah, I kind of have to have it middle-wise to have it be, well, anyways, you know. So to operate this, you're simply, again, just going to press this down. And this is either going to fire the, it's going to fire the buzzsaw, or it's going to spin the buzzsaw, or it's going to fire the missile. Let's see which one it actually connected to. I'm going to press it down. And there it is, the missile. Now, one thing about the missile, though, probably already saw it doesn't immediately fire it it almost as if it has to build up a little bit of air pressure in the chamber of the cannon before it launches off the missile luckily you also have a storage section for two other of these missiles that you can just slide back into place after you fire off the first one so again we're going to press that down and I'll try to do it from a distance so that you guys can actually see it press it down and there it goes fires off fires off across the room. Now if we switch this dial over, there we go, and we we press this down again, now it's spinning the buzzsaw. You see that? That is science. The question I'm sure anybody is asking is, can it fire both at the same time? No, it can't. Not that I can see. I guess the problem is there's not enough air pressure simply by just pressing that down to give enough pressure to fire and spin this both at the same time. By cutting off one section of the valve, you're allocating all the air. You're basically sending all the air to the other weapon. It's, I have to admit, while the gimmick is neat enough, certainly for kids, I find it's just a little bit more excess that Batman really doesn't need. Ideally, I would probably just take the weapons off completely because without them, I think it's a pretty neat looking Batmobile. The Cannon Attack Batmobile is a pretty sweet ride for the Cape Crusader. It's big. It's a little hollow, unfortunately, but that's the trade-off that we're going to be getting for at least having a vehicle for some of our figures. Few and far between do we ever get vehicles anymore for our figures unless you're a Star Wars line, but Batman does pretty good. He does pretty good when it comes to getting his own Batmobile. This one's neat because it has kind of a combination of different designs to it. Sometimes I look at it, I feel like I'm looking at the Batman Forever Batmobile. Other times I'm looking at it, I feel like I'm looking at the Ben Affleck Batmobile. So it's a kind of nice combination of different various designs, all smushed together to give us this vehicle for Batman. Now, unfortunately, 
unfortunately, even though as nice as the ride is, the gimmick sort of is just an add-on. You can kind of see that it's just sort of an afterthought, or maybe it wasn't necessarily an afterthought. That's being mean. But certainly where those tubes are supposed to go, I feel could perhaps have been an afterthought. Uh, unfortunately, they're just really long. And I get that they have to be long enough that the weapons can be put anywhere on the Batmobile. But unfortunately, what comes with that is that you end up having tubes that are dragging all over the place. Unless what you've done, unless what you've done is what I've done here in Final Looks. And sort of just draped all the extra tubing on top of the Batmobile, which is a bit of an eyesore. I'm glad at the very least that Mattel gave us the option that we could remove the weapon. So if you wanted just a really neat looking Batmobile, just take all this stuff off. Take all this clutter off. And what you're left with is still a pretty sweet looking Batmobile for Batman. One good news though is if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to find it now still in retail stores and toy stores alike. Again, a big thank you to Bill for taking the time and sending it my way. I'm very happy that this Batmobile turned out as good as I had hoped. I probably will just leave the weapons off though altogether. That's just my preference. Uh, if you guys wanted to go back and have a look at some of my other Batman Missions reviews, would you believe there's a whole playlist there just for you? And you, and you, and you. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will also be coming soon to this channel. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.